Hi, everyone. It's great to have you join us today for our session titled Enabling Utilities Next Generation of Small, Low Power Cellular Devices. This session is being sponsored by Tellet. Today's presenters are Marco Strucuzzi and Steve Lowe. My name is Teresa Hansen. I'm Vice President of Content here at Clarion Energy, and I'll be moderating today's session. Before I formally introduce Marco and Steve and turn the program over to them, I need to go over a few housekeeping items with you. I'm not going to read every bullet point that you saw on the housekeeping slide, but I do want to mention just a few things. First of all, we recommend that you shut down any applications that you don't need to have running in the background. This will just give you better performance and also allow you to concentrate on what you're going to hear and see in this presentation today. Uh, on the right side of your screen, just under where you see me, you should see a box with four tabs. You can use the Q&A button to ask questions for our speakers and also to ask help from our support team if you have any technical issues. We'll be monitoring the questions as they come in, so please feel free to send them in at any time throughout the discussion. You don't have to wait until our presenters are finished before you, you put your questions in. Uh, the slides from this session are available for you to download. Use the download button that you see there by the Q&A button. Uh, you can expand or contract the slides in the speaker view for your viewing pleasures. Just double click on the screen that you want to enlarge. And also you can use the Distribute Tech Plus platform to network with the, with the attendees as well as today's speakers in this session. We encourage you to explore it at your leisure once the presentation has been concluded or really at any time that's convenient for you. It is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just during these two days when we do our Plus series each month. So uh, please get on there and, and check it out. You can use the platform to connect with our partners and our attendees. And uh, you can click on the interested button on their profile and make a connection that way. So that's it for the housekeeping. I'd now like to introduce you to Marco Strakutsi and Steve Lowe. Marco Strakutsi is the head of product marketing at Tellit. He's responsible for working with product leadership and sales teams to execute on go-to market strategies that drive global awareness and adoption of Tellit's products and solutions. Marco identifies customer use cases, generates product specifications, and builds business cases for new products. Steve Lowe is the sales practice lead for AT&T's IoT utility grid modernization. He's responsible for leading the consultative sales team focused on energy and utility applications, including connected devices, partner ecosystems, advanced metering infrastructure, distribution automation, distributed generation, and FirstNet IoT. Steve has more than 25 years of experience in the utility and telecommunication industries, which includes strategy engagements with utilities of all sizes. He, has, he was instrumental in the development of at and private LTE solution for utilities. So welcome, gentlemen. I'll now turn the program over to Marco. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Teresa, for the introduction. Glad to be here with you today and uh, have the opportunity to entertain you for the next 15 minutes or so with my slight Italian accent. So let me, let me start my part so for those who know who, for those of you who don't know who tell it is uh, let me tell you a little bit about us so we are in the internet of things uh, business since uh, more than 20 years ever since uh, iot was not even called that way it was called them to m machine to machine at the time but it's still the same business and and we are still there our mission at Telit is to deliver innovative technology to connect and manage practically anything, any, any object you might think about. So with that in mind, uh, we want to provide end-to-end -end solutions for IoT that are made of hardware, that are our uh, wireless communication modules, mostly cellular modems. And it's also made of software and services, like an efficient device management platform that works out of the box with our modules. So if you, if you take the industry forecast of um, more than 40 billion connected devices in the next five years, and, and if, you relate it, if you relate it with the, um, with the quantity of modules that we ship to the field every year, we can say that Telit modules are powering uh, an IoT device almost every second as we speak. And, and that is to give a, a sense of the scale of the Internet of Things opportunity in the, in the next coming years. So the beauty of Internet of Things is that uh, it's across the board. You can implement IoT solutions for different vertical market segments. 
In fact, thanks to wireless connectivity and remote management tools, everything, every object becomes smart. That's why we call it a smart X, where X can be anything. It goes from um, uh, smart soil moisture sensors for, um, for agriculture to any kind of um, uh, smart device for homes or building, things about alarm panels, uh, um, smart thermostats, smoke detectors. It ranges again from smart wearables for telehealth to smart uh, machines, robots for industry 4.0. And last but not least, utilities. Utilities are among the first areas with a solution ecosystem that has evolved during the past few years. Internet of Things can dramatically improve the efficiency, the resilience, and the reliability of the energy grid of a utility. And, and that's why forward utility, forward thinking utilities are already investing in IoT for their grid modernization efforts. So uh, a few examples about how IoT can help utilities. The, um, the most common example is about automated meter reading for electricity, water, and gas. This helps the utility to get the readings, but this also helps the consumer to constantly monitor their energy consumption. Another example is solar panels uh, that are connected to the electricity grid and that help to, to make a better use of renewable energy. Again, both on the utility side and the consumer side. But both the meters and the panels are at the edge of the utility network. And, and there's much more happening behind the scenes. Um, the energy grid starts with the energy generation, and then it continues with the energy transmission and distribution. And there's really a lot that IoT can do to uh, help each of these steps. We, we at Telit, we know very well that the digitization process for a utility is not trivial. On the contrary, it is a huge program in terms of development, production, maintenance, and support. And for us, being part of such complex projects in the past has had a great influence on the way we approach such initiative now. We have more than 100 customers in the energy segment, and they have several million of connected devices deployed in the field, up and running. And, and this allows us to carry a full baggage of lesson learned that can really make a difference. I believe uh, uh, working with uh, experienced partners is one of the, if not the main key point for project success. So, I've been talking about the complexity of the smart grid infrastructure. But the grid is not only complex, it's, it's critical. It's a critical infrastructure as it supplies power to many different critical assets, from uh, homes to city infrastructure, from hospital to factories. Without power, nothing works. So it's paramount to adopt critical networking strategies in the grid. And this is to have a constant and accurate monitoring and control of what is happening in the grid and be highly reliable in case of major power outages. In a nutshell, restoration of electricity, gas, and water services is critical. And so the smart grid is a critical infrastructure and must be treated as such. So the first thing um, you must ensure to allow for efficient outage management is to, to implement in the grid the state-of-the-art communication technologies. And that's why in the next uh, slides, I'm going to talk to you um, about cellular technology, especially 4G and 5G, and how they can help utilities to power their mission-critical operation of the digital grid. So we, we strongly believe that cellular technologies are the right answer for the utilities' communication needs. First of all, because they are standard technologies managed by 3GPP, the, the International Standardization Body for Cellular Technologies. And being standard technologies, they ensure system interoperability and they keep evolving uh, through multiple generations of the standard through the years. Um, we all remember legacy standards like uh, 2G GSM and 3G UMTS, 
and then all the way up the evolution to 4G LTE and 5G new radio. Then uh, cellular standards and technologies are globally available. They allow secure exchange of data between the devices and the network, thanks to the most advanced uh, encryption um, technologies. They are good for both fixed and mobile use cases. So fixed like um, the meters or mobile like um, field workers that need connected tools uh, when moving around in the field. They can guarantee quality of service and they can guarantee uh, real-time communications that are very important in case um, there is, for example, an outage and you need to react, react quickly. So one of the main advantages of um, standards, as I mentioned, is that they keep evolving. And that's exactly the case for the new LTE low power wide area LPWA technologies. They are also known as LTM and uh, narrowband IoT. They were introduced uh, by 3GPP a few years ago to address specific need of, uh, of IoT applications. One being uh, low power consumption uh, to allow devices to, to run on a battery for many years. Think again about a gas or water meter that needs to stay in the field uh, for at least 10 years. And uh, the other important uh, feature is wide area coverage. So the ability to reach devices, even if they are installed in hard to reach locations. Think about uh, deep indoor in a building, in a house or, or in a basement. And again, cellular standards are continuously evolving. And for example, LTM and Narrowband IoT are guaranteed by 3GPP to be long-term technologies that will be interoperable with 5G and will keep getting updates and improve functionalities for many years to go. So what we do at Telit is we keep evolving our products and solution to keep the pace of the evolution of the cellular technology and always be at the cutting edge of technology. In terms of uh, hardware component design, this means uh, miniaturization. So uh, we are able to reduce the size of the cellular module down to the size of a penny, which is less than 300 square millimeters, um, and, and, and thus enabling for smaller than ever connected devices. If we talk about software development, there's really a lot of activities we are doing to add more and more value-added services on top of the module. I'm talking about a user space, to develop uh, application inside the module. We call it AppZone, Application Zone, and also an out-of-the-box end-to-end, both client and server device management solution that we call OneEdge. When talking about uh, device management in the context of uh, utilities, this is one of the most important points. In fact, uh, we all know that one of the biggest costs for utilities is the so-called uh, track roll, so the dispatchment of, of a technician to a certain location. And, and track rolls can be minimized if the proper remote device management tools are in place. And, and think that this is even more important um, in this global pandemic situation we live in, uh, where you want to avoid to send people around if it's not really necessary. So uh, I like to think about uh, uh, Telit products today, Telit modules, as the smartphones of the machines, because they are not anymore just a piece of hardware used to exchange data with the network, but they come with a rich suite of software applications and services on top of it. We, we believe that uh, uh, we believe in the shift from product-centric approach to a solution-centric approach to better serve our clients. Because we don't want to provide them only with an hardware component, we want to provide them with all the right tools to minimize their effort, their time to market, and ultimately their time to revenue to deploy their IoT projects. And also to keep controlling them uh, through the full life cycle, because it's only really at the end of the full life cycle of an IoT project that the real total cost of ownership uh, realizes. So 
Um, that was what we at Telit can do to help utilities at the edge to connect their assets in the field and control them when they are deployed. Then utilities have strong requirements also on the network side to protect their critical infrastructure, as we uh, mentioned a, a few minutes ago. And most of the times, uh, public, public cellular networks are not the ideal um, solution for this, but there are great solutions out there to provide utilities with dedicated cellular networks that guarantee service levels, resilience in terms of power backup, redundant backhaul, and long-term availability. A great example is the AT&T FirstNet network in the US, and, and Steve uh, is going to talk about it in, uh, in a minute. I just want to, to emphasize the fact that this demand coming from utilities to have dedicated mobile communication solutions for their critical infrastructure, it's a common trend we see happening also in the rest of the world. For example, in Europe, some utilities are looking into connecting their smart grid to the cellular network using a dedicated piece of the radio spectrum that is not used by commercial services around the 450 uh, megahertz frequency band. Needless to say that Telit has a solution for both AT&T FirstNet and 450 megahertz. One final information I want to give you before handing over to Steve. Uh, I just want to let you know that testing uh, Telit IoT solutions, it's easy. Uh, we have recently launched uh, a new evaluation kit. We call it Charlie. It's uh, it's made of a Telit module, an adapter board with few sensors. Uh, it can connect to our device management platform, and you can uh, easily expand it with Arduino compatible shields. So Charlie can be the starting if to test our solutions and, and you want to start your IoT journey for fast and easy development, prototyping and deployment of your IoT project. With that said, uh, I want to thank you all again for your attention and Steve, stage is yours. All right. Thank you, Marco. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Teresa introduced me and Marco mentioned, Steve Lowe here. <clears throat> I lead our AT&T IoT utility sales practice. And I appreciate the opportunity to discuss AT&T's utility first net approach with you. I've been with uh, AT&T 20 years, with the last 10 years focused on utility IoT applications, including a member of the team who uh, worked on the first PLT concept. And before I came to at and I actually was with American Electric Power for 11 years on the distribution side of the business. So uh, bring the, ut the utility side of the business to the conversation. You know, it's a, it's a true pleasure for me to get to spend time with utilities. And prior to my recent travel restrictions with uh, the challenges we had with the pandemic, I usually travel around the U.S. meeting with uh, all size utilities, investor-owned utilities, cooperatives, and municipalities, and, and look forward to the day that we get back to those. Um, let me get to the next slide here. So before I jump into the details of this slide, I uh, wanted to just make sure to give you some background on what FirstNet is all about. I'm not sure how many of you have heard about FirstNet, so I kind of want to run through a few things here. But as, as an outcome of the 9-11 of the Commission Report, uh, there we go back. Uh, as an outcome of the 9-11 Commission Report, public safety um, united in the need for a nationwide broadband network for first responders. And in 2012, the First Responders Network Authority was formed with a goal to deploy this type of network. And in 2016, an RFP was released, which AT&T ultimately was awarded and began to execute on the, the requirements. As winner of the RFP, we were held accountable by the FirstNet Authority, whose board has permanent members from Homeland Security, the Attorney General's Office, and Office of the Management and Budget. This authority has created a set of bills and performance matrix, which are held accountable for us to meet. And that's different than any other commercial solution available as they don't have that level of oversight by the FirstNet Authority, which is independent of AT&T. So it's not just AT&T building out what these requirements are needed. So what was built is the fastest overall network experience, performing faster than any commercial network. Moreover, FirstNet offers affordable solutions without the concern of, of being throttled anywhere in the country. And then moving on to the next slide, I'll, I'll dive a little deeper into some of the technology areas. 
So FirstNet gives public safety access to the only physically separate network core in the country that's dedicated entirely to the first responders and, and the extended primary who, who supports them. It's also monitored around the clock by a dedicated security operations center. Uh, it can only be accessed by a separate FirstNet SIM. FirstNet enables always on 24 by 7 priority and preemption across voice and data communications, and this is unmatched in the industry. FirstNet's also a highly re resilient network, which has been hardened to public safety standards and is supported by a dedicated network of deployable network assets like cell on wheels, cell on light truck, and we even have blimps that we can deploy to make sure that the network stays up in the situations of natural disasters. Uh, FirstNet is spurring a lot of innovation with more than 75 FirstNet ready devices. And as Marco mentioned, Intel is playing a role in, in making sure those devices are, are available for us and 50 plus unique applications that can help for situational awareness, which utilities require to maintain their networks are up. And FirstNet is increasing coverage and capacity across the country through the rollout of FirstNet, uh, our band 14 spectrum, which is now live in about 650 markets nationwide. And as a, a FirstNet subscriber, you get prioritized access on all of AT&T's networks in addition to band 14. And, and on the previous slide, you saw the, the multitude of bands that we're providing which is leveraging all the bands that AT&T has. So, you know, this was done for two reasons, to give you immediate access to the early benefits of FirstNet, while band 14 is being rolled out and to ensure you had you know, as much coverage and capacity as possible. And using all these AT&T LTE bands, including other bands in the 700 megahertz range like band 12 and band 17, FirstNet already covers about 99% of the US population today, as you saw on the previous slide. Some providers say, you know, spectrum, spectrum, and that in general commercial use may be true, but, you know, with band 14, it's a very desirable spectrum set aside by the federal government, specifically for public safety. Band 14 is an important addition to AT&T's other spectrum, and AT&T is legally required to clear all commercial traffic off of band 14 and when and where first responders need it, creating a first responders VIP lane. So, um, you know, I anticipate as we talk about this session being about low power cellular devices, some of the questions you might have is that where does it fit inside of the FirstNet network? And LTEM is an approved for use on FirstNet. The solution um, is approved at the LTEM radios, which is certified as FirstNet capable and which can use FirstNet SIMs and access the core solutions being built now. And so some of the customers we have that are deployed LTEM type technologies are Neptune is one, Landis and Gear is working on it. And we see the meter industry as one of the fastest growing areas of LTEM technology, low power type technology. Uh, and there's so many more sensing technologies as Marco talked about with the low power requirements that uh, now uh, the water industry where they don't have uh, power, they're able to deploy the, the meters and, and that's a fast growing area of the business for us and a fast growing part of the business for a um, first net perspective. But I mentioned the lanes, so you can see in the next slide here, kind of gives you an idea of what first net really is. So you see there's three lanes here, and it kind of shows you how the traffic is managed with first responders taking priority. And as you can see, an extended prim primary, which is the classification for a utility, will have priority over our commercial customers. In the event of a natural disaster, then a first responder can work with the incident, the regional incident manager, elevate an extended primary user to the same status as the first responder for the, the duration of the event. And utilities are extended primary, but if they have a dedicated fire police or a nuclear facility, they can qualify themselves for, for, as a first responder, so then they control their own destiny about when they would be able to be elevated and have control of that own uh, that, that process. But you know, as we discussed, FirstNet is becoming a preferred public wireless network by utilities for many of their growing IoT applications that uh, Marco talked about. But these numbers speak for themselves, but it's important out that over 30 of the top utility customers have deployed some of our form of the FirstNet, including support for SCADA, AMI distribution automation, and voice communications. And we have over 100 active discussions with utilities going on today. And that number is increasing on a, a daily basis. Uh, this adoption is based on the need for a utility to quickly support critical and non-critical communications and 
have the ability to scale without a significant investment in expense and in time. And I want to just take a minute to define, I mentioned extended primary, to ensure you understand what you, you, that you have a very similar experience as a extended primary as you do as a first responder with access to our first net networking, including prioritization at all times. So you'll always have prioritization for your traffic. The really difference between an extended primary and a first responder is the preemption capability. And what I mean by preemption is, is that if there's congestion on the, the network and you're trying to gain access to the network, as a first responder, you can um, kick off the commercial carriers and, and make access for you, make, make room for you. So in those situations, you can be uplifted and you can get that preemption. But as a first net um, customer and as an extended primary, you'll always have the prioritization of your traffic across their network. You know, in the past, it's been somewhat confusing. And so I just wanted to, to touch base uh, a little bit on it. But then again, you know, we'll have some Q&A time at the end. So if that comes up, I'd be glad to, to dive a little deeper into it. And in our next slide here, it looks um, kind of cares, talks a little bit some of the applications that have been approved. So while utilities are considered extended primary users, in addition, the, the, the specific use case would need to be approved by the FirstNet authority. For, for use of the network. So you can see a list of some of those applications that we currently have approved. And, and we have a simple process to take others for approval. This is not an all-inclusive list. These are just the ones that have become most common with SCADA, you know, probably being one of the most common situational awareness being also right up there with it. But um, we definitely can take up, as you have other applications, we can take them to the FirstNet Authority. Again, FirstNet Authority is an independent uh, board that is outside of AT&T that holds us responsible for being able to uh, meet the requirements of the RFP. And in one of these other conference uh, webinars that I presented at, we had one of the questions ask, well, how is this network different than the competitor's network and their first responders network? And then during that one, I had actually a FirstNet Authority individual on the call with me and they quickly said, well, I'm the difference in that, the, you know, I'm an independent third party government entity that is making sure that the first net meets all the expectations that was contracted for in, in the RFP. So, and then on the right hand side, many of you might be existing at t customers. So we're using the same platform for management of your SIMs and your, your connected devices through our control center. So it's a very similar type of uh, plane of gas, a glass that you can see. And uh, so it wouldn't be having to run two different portals if you're existing AT&T and if you become really confident and comfortable with it, then you can see it's very similar to it. And then we'll just briefly talk about a couple of use cases. And that, um, you know, this this use case was, uh, was an outcome of a joint strategy session between AT&T AT&T and utility to develop, help develop the five-year roadmap, which started with an executive briefing, which I participated in. And those uh, of you who have not done an executive briefing with AT&T, I would suggest you reach out to us. Let us bring you into uh, some of the resources that AT&T has from a, a network management perspective and, and have just a roll up your sleeve working session. And as with many utilities, you know, the core requirement going forward was to upgrade into near real-time connectivity to both their legacy and to their and be prepared for the new distribution automation equipment. So our proposed solution was accepted, including FirstNet as the foundation of wireless communications platform. So they saw the benefits. Um, and as many utilities were trying to do is reduce their operational expenses. So our solution gave them operational efficiencies, helped to resource optimize with the AT&T's project management, our LTE platform, and our utility experience uh, using our professional services and provided them with a turnkey solution. But it was all built on the foundation of the first net as being the, the wireless platform. And we use control center. And then the next use case I have, um, and I'll just briefly talk about it too, is um, another one where we actually met with this utility and, and the conversation, as I mentioned earlier, I helped to lead our private LTE, or Teresa did one, our private LTE product where we were positioning 2.3 gigahertz and utilities were looking to build out their own networks. Uh, we positioned FirstNet as our fallback, um, resilient, redundant network. And the CIO at the time, he looked at us and he said, guys, uh, I see FirstNet as my easy button. And I can get almost everything I want to do in my own private LTE network with your FirstNet network. 
It provides the, the level of latency bandwidth and has the capabilities that I would gain with a private network, but I want to roll it out as a um, quicker than I can roll it out. And so FirstNet was already there. Uh, we worked closely with our partner, Nokia, at that time um, in, in this engagement in which they provided 7705 HMC, which is a FirstNet certified device. And uh, we were able to provide, at t was able to provide a turnkey solution here where we were able to support them with staging, kitting, uh, professional services, project management, and help them to deploy, you know, going on 4,000 uh, connections to, to reclosure. So that is in a, a real quick, um, kind of where at t has seen FirstNet be a, a preferred wireless network for utilities. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to get to, to chat with you guys today and look forward to some. So thanks. Thank you, Steve. And thanks, Marco. Those were great presentations. Uh, we are now going to move to the Q&A portion of the session. So for those of you who have not yet put your questions in, please go ahead and do that now. We're going to get to as many questions as we have time for. Uh, but one thing I want to remind you, you can connect with our speakers on the platform or if we don't get to all the questions, they will see those after this session and they can reach out to you. So uh, go ahead and, and please put your questions in there. So with that, let's uh, not waste any more time and we'll just get started. Um, so the first question I have here, um, uh, let's see, uh, let's go with this one. Um, it, this is for, for you, Marco. It says, can you please elaborate more on the device management solution offered by Telex? Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, so, so our device management solution is what we call One Edge. Uh, it's based on on a standard protocol called Lightweight M2M, which allows for very efficient transmission of data uh, over the air, and therefore it also helps to to optimize the the power consumption of the device. So, what you can do with One Edge is you can monitor uh, your devices uh, in the field. Um, you can do it from a web-based uh, uh, dashboard, and and you can do many operations. Uh, you can um, you can query the status of the device. Um, you can take actions like uh, turn the device on, turn the device off, uh, change the configuration, the behavior of the device in the field, and and you can also that is very important these days. You can run uh, firmware over the air campaigns, so you can upgrade a batch of devices in uh, in the field. So those are of course just few of the actions you can do uh, to give you to give you an idea and you can find more about Telt One Edge on on Telt website. Okay, thank you Marco. Uh, so I've got another one here. There's several about the the first net and coverage. So I think this one is probably for you Steve. It says how do I find out if there is first net coverage in my area and can it help with coverage we have had in the past? Sure, great question. Um, definitely reach out to myself or your local at t account team for coverage. We can do an analysis for you. Normally what we try to do is get you to give us your latitude and longitude of the device locations that you want to be able to connect to. And we can give you, uh, you know, how strong of a signal will be there. And then I think that just to expand on that a little bit more is that, as I mentioned a little bit in my presentation, is that there's a list of applications that's been approved for FirstNet, and I think they are, are quite complete. But if you happen to have one of those that are, are not um, on that list, we'll be glad to take that and submit it to the FirstNet Authority for our approval. But um, uh, I'm glad to work with you. And, and as far as the coverage question, I think the second part of that is that, as I mentioned, by our requirement in RFP, we uh, have to meet 99.99% of the population of the U.S., and we're well within reaching out within the time frame that the RFP required, and so that has seen significant improvement on coverage areas that we had in the past. And then I talked about the importance of uh, band 14 at 700 megahertz, and 700 megahertz is a, a lower band so that it has much better propagation uh, characteristics and has helped us to improve our coverage. So. Hopefully that answers the question. All right, thank you. Uh, so I think probably this one's for you, Marco. It says, what differences should utilities consider when examining LTE-M and MB-IoT? Which you may have to tell me what those mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good question. LTM and Narband IoT are the, the two LPWA standards uh, defined by, by 3GPP for cellular technologies. 
So, so there are important differences, um, um, technical differences between the two technologies. Um, LTM um, allows for higher data throughput, uh, while narrowband IoT is, uh, is is more limited. We are talking about hundreds of kilobit per second in one case and tens of kilobit per second in another case. So um, this is uh, first. This is for sure an aspect you you must consider. Then, as we are talking about uh, uh, FirstNet specifically in this webinar, um, FirstNet supports LTM, uh, while as of today, at least, it doesn't support and there's no plan for narrowband IoT. So I apologize, Steve, I'm, I, I'm speaking on behalf of, uh, of you and AT&T, but I think it's important to mention as, uh, as the question was about how do I decide between the two technologies? No, I agree. And if my might add is that I think that at t still is under the evaluation of narrowband IoT as to whether it will be available on FirstNet, but definitely LTEM is available today, and we have seen some deployments of that. And the only thing I would also add is that you know due to the the low throughput and um, that firmware over the air updates may be discouraged, Marco. And so that's something that as you look at the application, you may want to put on narrowband IoT. You've got to realize there's some limitations that. Has it has a LTEM does not have. Great. All right. Uh, here's another one. It says, is there special equipment required to use FirstNet, and how do I find the list of certified hardware? I think it could be for either Marco or either one, because Marco can help with that. Because he, I mean, they're manufacturing a FirstNet certified device, and I think that's what's the key to understand is it doesn't need to be a FirstNet certified device. Uh, we have on our website, our FirstNet website, you can go to it, and uh, there's a list of all the devices that have been proved and certified. That list again is like the application that's growing every day, and I, I think that Telit's doing a great job of helping to do that by putting their technology inside of some of the CPE devices, the customer premises device, but it does need to have that FirstNet certified device, and it has a, a band 14 ca uh, comparable um, chipset in it. So, Marco, anything to add to that? No, just want to add that uh, if you want to check for uh, for TELIT modules that are pre-certified as FirstNet ready, uh, you can find them on, on our website as well as uh, on AT&T website. Um, they, they are modules supporting LT Cat 1, Cat 4, all the way up to LT Category 18. And all of them, they support Band 14, and they are tested and certified to the requirement of FirstNet. If we talk about um, LTM, um, that is good for extended primary users as utilities, um, the requirement of Pen 14 doesn't apply, but, but we also have LTM modules uh, lined up for certification as, as FirstNet ready. Great point. All right. Um, we've got one here. It says under the scenario above, I think that means the scenario probably that you gave, Steve. Uh, what if my utility does not pay for my handset and I must provide my own handset? Can I be on FirstNet? Yeah, I think that originally FirstNet was seen as a, a su supplement to land mobile radio communications and through voice communication. So uh, I think that initially FirstNet was uh, providing voice communications for first responders. So utilities are looking at rolling it out from a voice capacity. And what we're finding is, is that you know, it may be that the utility doesn't want to you know, uh, sign up for FirstNet, but if they are qualified for FirstNet and you, you pay for your own device, then yeah, we can, we can work with you to get you on FirstNet. So it does not have to be that the utility uh, is a FirstNet at t customer. We can sign you up on a, um, your, your own plans. All right. Yeah. Um, I think this one's probably for you, Marco. It says, what are uh, TELET FirstNet ready modules? Yeah, I kind of covered it uh, answering the, the previous questions. So, so we have multiple models. Uh, they are listed on our website and also on the AT&T approved module list. Uh, they range from CAT1 all the way up to, to broadband CAT18. So I really encourage you to, to go on either AT&T or TELET website uh, and, and check them out. All right. Um, here's another one about about the modules. It says they support power saving mode. Uh, yes, of course. So all of our um, LTM and narrowband IoT modules support 3GPP power saving mode. Uh, that allows for floor current consumption of the module of just a few microamps. 
and they also support uh, EDRX, Extended Discontinuous Reception, and this is another feature uh, important uh, when, when you want to preserve the battery of, um, of your device in the field. All right, great. Well, that looks like all the questions that we have right now, So, uh, which is pretty, pretty good timing. So um, I'll go ahead and, and, uh, and sign us off. I want to thank both Marco and Steve for, for that discussion, and thank you, audience, for, for all the questions. Um, and, of course, I want to thank Tellet for sponsoring this session. We, we appreciate their support. Before we sign off, we do have a quick survey or polling question for you. Um, you should see it on your screen now, or it should be coming out shortly. Ah, there it is. It says, you know, how can we provide you additional information following today's session? If you would just uh, answer that if you'd like to have a meeting with our speakers or you need additional information and follow up, let them know that. Um, that would be great. So go ahead and answer that. And while you're answering that, I want to let you know that this session will be available on demand on this platform within 48 hours. Uh, again, I want to thank Marco and Steve and Tellet for sponsoring and putting together this great session. And thank you all in the audience for joining us today. Please note that our next session, which is Modernizing for Reliability, One Utility Story, uh, it will uh, feature Commonwealth Edison. It will begin at 1.30 p.m. Central Time, so that's just a few minutes from now, about 15 minutes. So please uh, take a quick break and check your emails and plan to join us back here at 1.30 Central Time. Uh, again, thank you all very much and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa.